Our number one priority is, is safety of, uh, of drivers on our, on our roadways. So we just want to ensure that, you know, we're doing everything possible to, to make conditions safe for people when they're trying to get from, you know, point A to point B, especially in the winter months. Black ice can, you know, we, we know that can, can form at, uh, at short notice. So monitoring of, of different aspects such as the, the air conditions, the road temperature, um, you know, the, the amount of precipitation can all be useful to determining what kind of, uh, of approach and application is, is the best to, to deal with the conditions as they, as they manifest. Air temperature, road temperature, dew point um, and precipitation, all those can factor into the formation of black ice. Uh, so when we see the conditions that could present black ice, we do pre-treat it. Usually it's brine that we use to prevent that ice from bonding on the road. That said, e even our best pre-treatments aren't 100% foolproof. Um, you know, moisture can dilute with dew. The coldest time of day is usually just before dawn. So you can see some light rain at night uh, and that washes off our pre-treatment applications and then it, it opens up the skies at dawn and, and the temperature drops and we get black ice from an area that's highly susceptible to black ice formation is bridge decks. Um, one of the main reasons is uh, whereas the road basically that freezes from above uh, bridges are suspended so we have that air temperature sandwiching it which causes them to cool down faster than the road. One of the trickiest things with black ice is it can change quite quickly and it can change in very small sections. So you could have a perfectly pre-treated road and still have a few little sections where ice might occur. Um, so those are the sections we'd be patrolling. Patrol will depend on the type of forecast that's out there. If it's questionable, it might just be a pickup truck with a road temperature sensor on it. So what they'd be doing is monitoring the road temperature versus the air temperature as they're driving along. If we have pre-treated and we know that it's an issue, the patrols will likely be sand trucks. So they'll be out there with a load of sand on so that if they do come across something, they can apply that sand. Um, and many times they'll, they'll apply on corners or hills anyway, just to make sure that it's, it's taken care of. Safety is definitely a highest priority for both the ministry and our maintenance contractor. We all have different uh, response times to apply material on our roads, which will be based upon the classification of the, of the roadway. Our expectation is that uh, our contractors, they'll be uh, monitoring the conditions to determine when's the appropriate time to adapt the approach. Our operators, depending on the conditions, have a few uh, available applications of sand at their disposal. So if, if they uh, are at an intersection or a hill or a really shady corner, they can just blast, as we call it, sand and give it a really solid application to make sure that grid is up. And if it's more of a, a minor concern, they can sort of put the sand out at a, a lesser level just to make sure that it's not causing more of a hazard. Our equipment puts it out at a steady application. Um, that application is an industry standard. It's slightly adjusted for our climate. The application is calibrated regularly and audited. We really see it as a, as a partnership relationship between the ministry and our maintenance contractor. We're jointly working together to try and make sure that uh, road conditions are as safe as they can be during winter events. Our application is fairly well controlled and, and consistent. Um, what is not consistent and well controlled is micro weather patterns and small areas of moisture and condensation and dew and things like that that interfere with the application rate. A good rule of thumb we, we have is if we've gone through a cold spell, the road temperature could be colder. Um, and as the air warms, the road takes a lot longer to warm. So if we have a dewy morning and it's warm in the air, but the road temperature is cold, we could still see some ice freeze. On Vancouver Island in the coastal region, I, I highly recommend all drivers before you're headed out, check that weather. If it's above and below zero, give yourself a little bit of extra time. If it's fluctuated in there, it's a high likelihood there could be some black ice out there. Main Road has a lot of patrols, especially during a forecasted event, but obviously we can't be everywhere at once. So we do rely a bit on the traveling public also to give us information we may not see at the moment. So please call our 1-800 number and report any sightings of black ice so that we can address them. Uh, the ministry does uh, audit us to logs called in. So if you call the 1-800 number, it is tracked and audited by the ministry and our response times are verified based on call time. So, uh, I highly recommend you use that. It, it's uh, a great level of accountability and it also helps with our partnership. Let's all have a safe winter. <laughs>